Hey there, Dr. George Landis, board certified plastic surgeon. A surgical technique in breast augmentation that can be a little difficult to understand is dual plane breast augmentation. So let me take you through it and see if I can bring some clarity to this. Of course, no two breast augmentations are exactly the same. In providing you with optimal results for your natural proportions, your particular aesthetic goals, and your lifestyle requires a surgical plan that's customized to you. And so this will include the implant type, the incision location, and the pocket created surgically right beneath your breast. Now, there are really five breast implant locations. These include number one, subglandular, where the implant sits behind the breast gland, but above the muscle. Next is a partial submuscular, with the implant partially behind the pectoralis major muscle. Next is a complete subpectoral when the implant sits completely behind the muscle. Next is a subfascial where the implant is above the muscle and behind the breast. And then lastly, the dual plane where the implant sits partially behind the breast and partially behind the muscle and the breast is slightly released from the muscle to allow expansion of the lower part of the breast where the implant will sit more. And while most commonly, I prefer some type of dual plane technique because it allows me to adjust the position of the muscle relative to the breast and the breast tissue permitting better control of implant position. So how is this done? Well, it's done by dividing the attachments of the pec major muscle above the inframammary fold. That's that area where the underwire of the bra sits and then releasing the attachments of the breast tissue to variable extents from the muscle based on your own individual anatomy. Now this allows for the optimal implant position for individual patients and oftentimes a more natural outcome. The dual plane technique provides you with the benefit of both partial subglandular and submuscular placement simultaneously creating a natural look with the reduced implant visibility being under the muscle while allowing the breast skin to fit the implant and it helps treat mild sagging. So women with something that's called tuberous breasts where the lower part of the breast is constricted may also benefit from this technique. Again, the lower pole of the breast expands more which then corrects more of a downward facing nipple while giving the entire breast a more attractive shape. Hey, I've got a video on tuberous breasts you can also check out on my YouTube channel. So how do I decide if dual plane breast augmentation is right for you? Well, usually there's going to be some mild breast sagging and nipple descent. Uh, next, the breasts often look deflated after pregnancy or breastfeeding or weight loss. And you look like you'll have a more natural breast with some fullness in the lower pole. So if you have excessive breast sagging, it's important to know that this technique will provide, not provide you with a dramatic lifting. That would require um, a breast augmentation with a breast lift. And I have a video on that you can check out about what happens in a breast lift. So while the recovery process of any procedure can vary from person to person, most women are able to get back to their non-strenuous jobs within the first week. While it's normal to be sore and tired for the first few days, light activities such as showering and walking can be resumed the next day after surgery. You can see more of that on my video on breast augmentation recovery. As with any technique that involves implant placement under the muscle, it's normal to experience some muscle tightness and some soreness in the chest as your body heals and accommodates to the breast implants. As part of a rapid recovery program, you'll be given prescriptions for medications which will raise your pain threshold and cut down on swelling as well as bruising. So using this regimen, we found that the majority of our patients report pain levels to be low and often don't need any opioid pain medications. So our goals are to optimize your recovery after surgery and this will be explained to you in detail during your visit with me and with our patient educator. So, I hope you found this to be helpful. Be well, be healthy.